Hey guys, it's time for the weekend Q&A again. You know, it's really funny. I had a couple people tell me that they were disappointed that I didn't read some of the mean con comments last week. And you know what? I just didn't have any. And it's really funny. I mean, isn't it sad that we look forward to mean content? Con I don't. I don't look forward to mean comments. I wish everybody was nice. Everybody say nice stuff to me, okay? That's all. <laughs> Anyways, I do have a couple kind of not so nice ones this week. And uh, it's kind of sad that people look forward to those. I don't know. So anyways, I've only got a few questions, so uh, why don't we just jump right into it, okay? Uh, this one, first one says, I live in Lodi, California. This year I grew 47 varieties of peppers. My favorites are hots. Wow, 47 varieties of peppers. That's a lot. I think the most I've ever grown was like 12. Uh, I'm starting to grow to get into tomatoes. Can you recommend a few varieties that do well in extreme heat, zone 7 or zone 9B? Wow, zone 9B. Okay, I've never lived in 9B. Zone 9B is where people go on vacation. They don't... <laughs> it's just... that Summers like 9B are just uh, hot. Anyways, uh, I since I don't have experience doing it, I actually emailed a couple people that I know that live in Southern California and one lives in uh, Southern Georgia and one lives in Florida. So I asked them, what do they grow in extreme heat? And they gave me lists, and so what I, I picked the three most popular ones that were on the list. So I have three for you: Prudence Purple, Illinois Beauty, and Arkansas Traveler. Those three seem to be the best, the the, the three top ones as far as uh, doing good in heat and the best flavors and probably disease resistance and all that. So, anyways, I I can't say from personal experience because I don't grow in nine B. I live in seven B. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> okay, so the, those three. So I hope that helps. Uh, next one. What is your absolute favorite tomato for taste? I have two favorites. Everybody knows that I love the Opelka. That is, to me, that is the top. Number one, everybody should grow that tomato. That's, to me, that's, I mean, that, I, I just, I don't know what to say. I can't say enough things about it. People that know me know that. And then, of course, my favorite cherry would be the Brookhaven cherry, the one that I dehybridized. That one has the most flavor. It's it's just an incredible, incredible tomato. And f in fact, next year I'm going to grow it again. I'm going to grow a lot more. And then next fall, I will be giving away seeds for it. So make sure you watch for that after next summer. I've heard an argument recently that tomatoes don't... We got a lot of tomato questions, don't we? These are tomatoes. I didn't even realize that. Uh, I've heard an argument that tomatoes don't cross-pollinate. Okay, number one, that's not true. They do cross-pollinate. Uh, I think a lot of people grow things in close proximity, and then they don't appear to cross-pollinate. And tomatoes uh, don't cross-pollinate easily. That's what we should be saying. Uh, but they do. Um, I know potato leaf varieties can, and they cross even easier than regular leaf. Okay, let's let's stop that for a second. That's also not true. I mean, that's been my experience. People, some people seem to think that 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 potato leaf varieties. I don't know where that came from, and I I can't find out how that started. That rumor started that they cross potato leaf varieties cross easier than regular leaf variety tomatoes. I, I don't know where that that rumor came from, and I don't know what substantiates it. So I can't. Oh, I can only say by personal experience and talking to experienced growers that just that's just not the case. Uh, what's your take on it? I just gave you that. And how far should people separate their plants? I believe that if you separate your your tomatoes by 30 feet, I think the chance of cross pollination is minimal, very minimal. And if you're just growing for your own your own stock, then I wouldn't worry about it. You know, 30 feet is definitely going to be far enough away so they won't cross pollinate. So, so when in doubt, 30 feet. If you're paranoid, 50 feet. Uh, if you're super duper paranoid, just grow one variety. <laughs> That's all I can say. I mean, I I don't I don't think potato I don't think tomatoes cross pollinate easily, but yes, they do. They 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 can. Uh, but if you want to you want to do a cross, you have to do it by hand. You have to. You know, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, and then the last one here on this, cause I just want to make this really quick because they seem to be getting kind of long. Our squash, pumpkins, and zucchini were decimated by a beetle bug this year. 
How do you treat something? How do you treat for something like this? It basically killed all of our blooms. Okay, I wrote down about six things in order that I would definitely consider. First off, I mean, I don't have a big beetle problem. Um, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I just don't have that. I think just some places are susceptible to it. Uh, I think the number one thing is there you have to make sure that you don't make it a cozy place for them. Don't give them an environment that is hospitable to them. But anyways, the number one down here that I wrote is neem oil. Neem oil is, I think, the number one thing that you can use to... I think it works the best, in my opinion. Uh, I've used it before. It seems to work fairly well. It's not going to take them completely away. It's not going to eradicate all of them, but... I would definitely give that a shot. Uh, pyrethrin. Pyrethrin is, um, is I think, the second best thing that you could use. Um, it's got some insecticidal compounds in it. It comes from the chrysan chrysanthemum plant. And it's totally safe and totally safe to use around other plants and, and whatnot. It's not going to hurt them. And so I would go ahead and give that give that a try. If, that, if, the, if the neem oil doesn't work, certainly try the pyrethrin. Uh, if you get them in the grub stage of their life cycle, you can try soap and try using like two tablespoons in a gallon of water and spray your plants with the soap. And, and then what will happen is it will coat the, um, the, in, in their stage, at, at the grub stage, it will coat them and then it does something to, it doesn't give them some kind of oxygen or something like that. It just, I, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm not. I'm not bright enough to figure all that out. I just know that 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 beetles and whatnot they breathe through their through their bodies through their skin, and when it, you put that coating on there, it just suffocates them. And I know it sounds kind of gross, right? But it works. Uh, I do know that there are some people that talk about using parasitic nematodes, basically nematodes that live in the soil, and uh, I don't know anything about them. I don't use that. I don't use sprays, and I don't use nematode nematode nematodes and, and neem oil much and I, I try not to use any of that stuff because I think what happens is is that I think bugs can come become resistant to it and I don't I believe in 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 preventing them from coming in the first place so but if you do get them and if I do seem to happen I had a horn hornworm problem one time about five six years ago and I went around with a hot water soapy bucket and I I just saw them and I picked them and I threw them in there and I got them at that the worm stage before they turned into flying away, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, and it, that the end of that summer, I didn't have any. So I just I think hand picking is probably the easiest thing to do. And you just have to be diligent. You can't you can't leave your garden, walk away, and then expect it to to nothing to happen. You got to keep an eye on it. You got you know it's it shouldn't be a lot of work, but you just have to keep an eye on it. So I think just diligence is 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 what you're going to have to just keep 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 diligent and i think that you'll be able to take care of them um and then the uh, the almost last one uh i love your survival gear videos why do you do so many flashlight videos okay <laughs> okay i'm i'm like a little kid i love flashlights in fact i've got two more flashlight videos coming up in the next week or two and um, it's ironic that that somebody posted this question because I'm the thing about my gear is that I always try to be completely independent. I like to find stuff that uh, that helps me do that. That that to me, uh, when the power goes out, the grid goes down, or anything like that, I want to be 100% self-sufficient. So that's why I do these videos. So I I hope you appreciate them and keep watching for them. Uh, the not so nice. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, what, oh no, I don't want to do that one, that one's really mean. You can't possibly expect me to believe you don't fertilize, right? I wasn't born yesterday. Okay, yeah, I do expect you to believe, I, or no, I don't expect you to believe it. I just don't. You're going to have to just either believe me or you don't. I don't fertilize. That's just cut and dried, plain and simple. I I lay compost and wood chips on my on my beds and on my ground and... It works perfectly for me, and some people call that fertilization, actually, but I don't buy fertilizer. I just don't. I don't put it on, so don't, don't expect you to. Uh, and then the very last one, saying you're wrong is correct. Y-O-U-R. Go back to school. 
<laughs> okay, no, it's not correct. When I say, when somebody tells me you're wrong, Y-O-U-R, it's not right. It's wrong. It's your, Y-O-U-R, you're wrong. It's possession. It's it's your, why are we beating this to death? Why is everybody just all of a sudden had to jump on that? You're wrong. You are wrong. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. Go to, if it, you know, if there are any teachers, let me know how I can explain this to people, but I don't. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, why are you are wrong? You're wrong is incorrect. It's wrong. So anyways, <laughs> I hope this was quick enough for you guys because I know some people don't like, you know, really long videos. But anyways, uh, I did have a couple of people ask me about the taste test of the Carolina Reaper and the banana pepper. That is coming up tomorrow. So make sure you watch for that. That'll be coming up. And um, yeah, it's, um, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I just... I did the taste test and I'm going to be uploading the video tomorrow. So anyways, there's the quick Q&A for this weekend. And I do have a couple more videos coming up uh, soon in the next few days. So keep watching for those. All right. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you later.